we have time for a couple more questions. Yeah, this is Lang Long Lady right okay. here. Hi, uh, so going back to the South China Sea, yeah. you mentioned that in, in the policy this entire time, that we should look at their interests and their needs. Yeah. But when they're not willing to see any other point but theirs, how can you start a diplomatic dialogue with them? Like yeah, I, I have never found the Chinese to be that intransient, really. I mean, you know, I, I, uh, I probably spent more time with my Chinese counterpart, who's like, and you know, in their system, you, it's just hard to figure out who the hell they are, really. I, as far as I can tell, my guy was like four guys down on the depth chart. And, uh, and so pretty influential, both in the party uh, as well as in the military. And so when I had uh, uh, conversations with him, I, they always started with the usual talking points. You know, he, he would sit there and dutifully say, you know, you guys are giving too much to Taiwan. You're invading our airspace doing reconnaissance. You know, your stance in the South China Sea is unacceptable to our national interest. Haven't you forgotten about, or have you forgotten about the nine dash line and our assertions and, and, you know, you claim that you're preserving international order, but that international order was established when we weren't around. Now we're back. You know, it was, I mean, I could, I, I could go on. I mean, and we do that for 30 minutes, and then I would do my particular talking points that the State Department gave me for 30 minutes. And then generally, at the end, I'd, I'd close the book and I'd say, his name was Fang. I'd say, okay, Fang, let's, we really need to talk about this. Because I said, every time we get together, we say the same damn thing to each other. And he'd laugh, you know, and he'd, he'd kind of look around nervously because he had people, political people. You couldn't tell who they were, but they were in the room, you know. But eventually, with a little perseverance, uh, we, you know, we, we, got some, we got some work done. For example, there was no um, mechanism for me to contact him on an, an extremist business. We, we had to go, th it, before we, I solved it, but initially I had to go through my embassy to, his, to their embassy. Their emb so U.S. Embassy, Washington, D.C., or State Department to U.S. Embassy, Beijing, to State Department or Ministry of Foreign Affairs to you know, the Politburo to check and see if the conversation could occur, and then over to Fong. And I, if I wanted to talk to him, it could take like two weeks, really, you know, to talk to the guy. So I said, look, we really got to, you know, we might have like a mid-air, um, you know, a, an unsafe intercept, or we might have an unsafe um, approach at sea. And I said, we ought, you know, we really got to be able to talk about these things. And so we put a, a, a hotline in, and then like a year later, I said, okay, let's do that. But I said, this is the 21st century. What about a VTC, you know, or can I FaceTime you? I, I didn't say that. <laughs> and so we put in, we did, we put in a VTC. And, uh, but it took us a year to get the approval on their side. Because they were convinced if we're, if we're in there with a VTC, God knows where we're going, you know, in cyber. And so there's not, you know, there's not a whole lot of trust there. Just, just there's not. So we, we got that done. We put rules of engagement in the air. You know, you, thou shalt not approach any closer than... And by the way, since we put the rules in, they haven't violated them. So, <clears throat> have you ever heard of the, of the phrase Thucydides trap? Thucydides wrote in the Peloponnesian War. And he wrote that it was the fear of rising Spartan military power that caused Athens to militarize, which was the start and inevitably led to the Peloponnesian War, which lasted decades and took you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives. We have to be careful of a Thucydides trap with China. And, and what I mean by that is we're the status quo power. And generally speaking, status quo powers don't like rising powers. And generally, they will misinterpret the activities of rising powers, as the rising power will misinterpret the activities of the status quo power. It's just human nature. What's the answer? We got to be in their pocket and they got to be in ours. And we got to be, you know, I mean, look, we can't be that. I asked my Chinese counterpart, tell me what's most important. He said, okay. He said, I don't like to do this, but I, he said, I, I'll tell you what I think is most, him. One China policy, number one. He said, non-negotiable. You know, anything that seems to threaten the one China policy, you can expect us to be really uncooperative about it. Second thing, of course, uh, for them, is the nine dash line in the East China Sea, South China Sea. But he said, he said, look, but, you know, he goes, it's not, it's a dash line. It's not a solid line. And he said, what he was saying to me was, we know we're going to have to figure this out. But it's not me and you that have to figure it out. It's our political leaders. 
The third thing on the list, I think, was uh, reconnaissance. We do, we do reconnaissance just outside of the 12 mile limit. And they know it and they don't like it. They don't like us um, collecting intelligence. And so we've actually kind of negotiated that. I, I told them, I said, look, if, if you were a little more transparent, you know, about some of your programs, like, you know, building submarines and building aircraft carriers, we might not be all that interested in watching you do it. But and it's legal. We're in the we're in international airspace. And the last one was cyber. You know, we're always banging up into each other on cyber. But think about what I just said. He said, number one, one China policy. What's the first thing that happened in our new administration? We called into question the one China policy. I can't tell you how bad that was. Now, I think we've recovered. I hope. But that's why you've got to know. It, this isn't about when you get into these positions of leadership, any of you, you, you just start to learn at that point. That's not when you finish learning. If you're not a lifelong learner, you're going to be a bad leader. And so you get in those positions, you try to f understand before you act, and you can avoid things like a Thucydides trap. If you don't, you'll, you'll blunder into them.